I like those headphones, man. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I, I feel like I needed something to, um, to, you know, really listen. And, and these were like a pretty cheap pair on Amazon. So. And like uh, focus in, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, it's better to hear this versus, um, you know, coming through the computer, which I've tried a couple of times. So little by little, I'm like, you know, yeah. Building up. So, uh, so yeah. So thanks for being here. Um, I've been wanting to, to catch up with you for a little while, um, ever since we met, um, just to give people a little idea of, um, you know, what your background is, your uh, creative director over at um, QVC, um, which is really interesting during this time. Um, you know, you guys are, uh, you know, how are you doing like pretty well uh, at this point compared to you know, the retail space in general is, is suffering a little bit, but. Yeah, I think that, I think overall the company's pretty healthy. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it, it was um, like in a, in a pretty good space before, but from during this uh, crisis, and everything like it seems that it's because everyone's home <laughs> all at once and um, QVC has a bit of a, a competitive advantage with being able to broadcast right into people's homes um, you know the the company's still still healthy and it's interesting because people aren't don't consume TV like they used to you know like flipping through the channels and like see something and they stop and watch it I mean some people still do that guess i don't know um for me i'm always like really particular about if i'm gonna go watch something you know i don't like click through but um even with qvc just running a broadcast 24 7 and someone is clicking through or if they're scrolling through their guide on their their system um now that people are home you know qvc has a has that like 24 7 advertising as a channel and if people are just seeing it, it, it triggers them in their uh, subconscious. And maybe computer for QVC. Or, oh, I saw that thing on QVC. So it is actually um, a good thing um, in a tough time. Yeah, yeah, and it's and it's something. The more I'm thinking about it, it's, it's you know something that's there. It's consistent. You know these these hosts become you know people's uh, you know friends more or less, and uh, you know there's a lot of people out there. You know a lot of people are, are coming together, families. You know I've heard um, you know people just, you know, different um, sons and daughters are getting furloughed, so they're coming back home mm-hmm. to their parents' home and and you know having their grandchildren around, things like that. But then there's also the other side of it where there's single people who are by themselves who you know might appreciate something. Um, consistent like that. So I thought that was pretty interesting, you know, thinking about. Yeah, it is. People at this time aren't across the board, you know, the same. No, yeah. And I think that people who were watching prior to all of this are especially watching now because it is like some of their routine and that like host is still there. Even if they're broadcasting, like we're talking right now because they've been doing that. You know, people have been, you know, calling in via video chat and you know the the host does the show or a guest does the show from their home while they're broadcasting which is kind of cool yeah no that is uh i mean i guess all the networks are doing that type of thing but to to do a a sell or like talk about a product or whatever seems like um interesting you know approach yeah and that's what i've always found interesting about qvc like even around you know christmas and and all that time I always find myself watching it because it just amazes me. I was just talking to my buddy about this yesterday and I was like, it, it amazes me how much they could talk about some of these products, you know, for, you know, hours, it feels like, you know, just an iPad or something, something very simple, but you know, they make it just seem like, wow, like that is, you know, it comes with this. So, you know, I really, I give a testament to those people, you know, um, that, that can do that. I mean, obviously it's their job, but it, it is a skill and, uh, and yeah, to be selling in this environment is, is weird, but also if you do it the right way, I think people do appreciate that. You know, if you give them some entertainment or, you know, really are giving them value, even though yeah. I might not be the target audience, but. Right. And, and I'm not either, you know, it definitely is a female target audience. Yeah. Um, and I was just going to say that, um, one of the QVC's like brand attributes is like authenticity and just being real and being authentic. And I think 
that's what people like are connecting with on mm-hmm. the show is that the host they are themselves and they have that like ability to talk about one product for hours on end like when, when you say that i think of like my brother-in-law or an uncle who like you see and they could like just talk about one subject to you forever do you yeah. have someone like that in your family? <laughs> i have a brother-in-law and i love him but he can go on and on about you know the one thing that comes up, you know? And, and that's, that's incredible that people can do that. You yeah. Know, I wonder sometimes like, what, what could I really talk forever about? And it's tough. I have a lot of different interests, but I guess, you know, what, what are some things that, you know, you feel like if you were, you know, QVC host, like what could you get up there and talk about for a while? Like what would be one of those? Yeah. Things? The first thing I think I could definitely talk about would be like music equipment. Okay. Like if you're a guitarist or a DJ or a drummer, um, like I'm uh, a musician and love to play music. And I was a DJ in Philadelphia for, you know, all through college and even after college for a long time. Um, And, you know, that, that made me really get into like the uh, equipment, like amps, you know, turntable, like all the stuff. Like um, I've spent, countless hours researching that stuff and trying it out and sending it back. So I feel like if uh, all else fails, I could, you know, sell music equipment. Oh, music equipment. Yeah. yeah. So what, what do you think? So I guess, you know, given my setup, it's pretty, it's pretty basic. Um, and me just coming into this, it, it, there's kind of a learning curve with it, right? I mean, to understand yeah. all this, I'm not, you know, yeah. really inclined towards, understanding music like what are your thoughts on on that yeah i mean you have it the mic is important it's really important piece and you it sounds great you know so from my from the way i'm hearing you it sounds really good any background noise and stuff like that so that's awesome um and you know there's other things that if you wanted to like broadcast it to yourself instead of being in headphones, like would you use um, like reference monitors or like full range monitors and where would you place them and that sort of thing that would come down to like the design of the room itself. And that's, that's also another interesting thing. But since you're in the headphones, like you can control and contain that environment virtually you right. know, and, and have it sound uh, and, and recreate really anything, you know, we could be in a church or a, a hall like you we could figure out how to make it sound like that yeah that's so, and that, that's the interesting thing about that yeah um the one the one thing that maybe you'll you'll get to um purchase next would be a compressor right yeah you would hook to your mic in case like you start laughing really hard or um you know like the volume gets really loud it it would keep it at a um a comfortable range for the listener to hear without distorting the sound okay so yeah i've seen that option in um in garage band when i'm yeah. like through an editing and and you know there are so many things in there i'm like i have no idea what this stuff does and i'm just sitting there tweaking i'm like this sounds a little tinny like i could hear my voice you know breathing um so it's, it's such a it's such a wild thing like for anybody that's that's starting up a podcast and, and has this equipment and never has seen it before um yeah like the you, e, like eq and all that stuff it's 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 a whole that's a whole other like discipline in and of itself that yeah. i can't really speak to um except from just the trial and error like you like you're doing right now you know yeah. from from a, a music production standpoint um are you into just the equipment or <clears throat> actually putting music together do you know are you pretty familiar with that? Yep, yep, uh, familiar with that. Um, I'm not just in the equipment, but I think, you know, a byproduct is getting being in the equipment. But um, um, I always was into hip hop and uh, you know that that world and just electronic beats and um, even like house music and stuff like that. So how was that made? And I I um, gravitated towards the MPC, the Akai products. Um, there's an MPC 2000, which is like, um, if you could, one of the more iconic things was Kanye was playing it on, um, I don't know, it was like the music awards or something like that. Um, you can picture him with just like 
doing something right like just yeah. on a stand yeah so that was um an akai mpc which is just like a um a standard beat making machine like one of the best uh toughest and sounds amazing to live so that's why people use it yeah it's yeah. actually I, I bought the um are you fam probably familiar with the uh, machine yeah exactly um, so i bought one of those like two years ago i really tried learning it and you know, I, I, to be honest, I gave up a little bit on it because it just seemed, you know, with, with the software and the hardware, you know, I'm watching YouTube videos, but it just seems to not, you know, because it's I don't really understand music theory, you know, yeah. in general, it's tough to formulate, you know, which, which one to do. And, you know, like from your perspective, if, if somebody's starting out, like how do you get into even just understanding how music gets put together so that you could maybe have a, I think GarageBand is a great place to start, honestly. Yeah. GarageBand, you know, like even if you just started out with like a blank uh, file with no, nothing in it and you selected like a drum track, a um, bass track and a guitar track or something like that um, or a keyboard or something just to, just to get something going. And um, your drum track could turn into like 16 tracks of separate drums or beats you know um so you just start out simple meaning like get a hi-hat going on one track and then add another and then maybe get a kick and a snare on the next just so you have more control because you're kind of like building it on these micro layers yeah that's that's you know there's no real um you know because I've, I've explored a lot of the youtube videos to figure out even creating my um theme song for this show yeah and you know it was more or less just like a one of those beats that uh you know it, it you know was generated by you know whatever the ai of, of yep. garage band yeah um yeah it, it's no one takes you through and says okay to make this or just to make just any track in general you know add a drum track add this and like if you have these three things you should have a nice beat they just start throwing it together and i think it's one of those tough things where it's it's tough to teach something, you know, if mm. it, it's like, I, I forget what they call it. Like, um, like, like doing it to... or something like that. Like, it's like you, oh. you think you know it, um, or you think you're explaining it right, but you know too much. So yes. it's hard to really take it all the way back and say from very beginning, like I know nothing. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. And it's, it, it's interesting you bring that up because I find that the same on YouTube videos too. You know what I mean? A lot of times, I feel like I find a more like not not a super produced YouTube video, but someone um, ordinary person sharing information mm -hmm. because you sometimes get those little nuances in that type of video, even though the whole video may be tough to tougher to sit through. You find those little nuggets of information in there because they're not they're at your level of explaining it. Do you know what I'm saying? Right. It's like versus, saying, like a, yeah. versus like a very seasoned like producer who's like, okay, here's how you make a hip hop beat. And it's like, <laughs> whoa, like <laughs> they're just like adding tracks and you know, this, this, and this. I'm like, whoa, hold, slow down, slow down. Like, what did you just do there? No, it's true. And, and not to mention like, you know, what speed is the song? Uh, you know, like what is, is there a concept behind the song? Or are you just like trying to make a beat or a melody or, you know what I mean? So um it gets into those next layers too but you you said something that i found i've sat in that same seat so many times where it's like i want to learn this i know once i learn it i'll be able to do something cool with it and mm -hmm. um but like getting past the technology curve the software the hardware how it all works together on your laptop how do you hear it before you can even get to the creative level is like a big chunk of time and energy. You know what I mean? Yeah, it seems huge. And it's, you know, I've, um, I met, you know, another, another uh, client of mine, you know, they, they're, they have like a music studio, all this stuff. And I asked the guy, I'm like, you know, he's, he's got all this stuff around him. I'm like, you know, you've done some pretty cool stuff. He, he does things on the side. I'm like, how, how do we do this? Like, you know, I have this machine, I've tried it's like, oh, just do YouTube videos. And everybody says that. And for the most part, like, yeah, you can, you can figure out things. Like, you know, I've, I figured out how to 
reseize in my cast iron pan. Like that's not <laughs> rocket science. Like I just follow the directions and you know, it takes a little bit of time, but it works. But something like music production is just, you know, unless you're sitting with somebody that is musically inclined or helping you along with it, I don't know, like, like you said, like it is tougher to follow along sometimes and figure that out, especially when there's more behind music. Like it feels like there's a lot behind it because yeah, there's, it's, not yeah. just, it's not just, it's not a science. It's, it's an art, you know, more. Yeah. Or less. yeah and then um, like, uh, I'm sorry to interrupt just because there's was one thing is like with DJing, like with vinyl, like I used to DJ, I still DJ with vinyl mm -hmm. um, or Serato, you know, I, the vinyl feel in turntables. Um, but like, I've often had like um, friends, children or cousins, like, well, how do you like match a beat? Like that's what everyone wants to know. How do you match a beat or how do you scratch? And what, what is matching? What is, what is matching a beat just for anybody? And I don't yeah. know. So. No, yeah. So like you have one track playing on a turntable at a particular speed and you want to mix in like another song and at the same speed, at the same beat. So it's a, a seamless and nice fade. Okay. Um, like more so in house music. And you, you, you do do it in, um, you know, hip hop based music. Um, but it could be a bit more abrupt with hip hop just because of the style. But like, you know, it's like a fade basically. Okay. Um, yeah, when you're so, like, you know, pushing that middle bar over. Yeah. Line yes, the cro the okay. cross fader, right. Or so like in house music, I'd have a track going. Um, and maybe this, it's after a, um, after like a chorus or a break or something like that. It's something, uh, so kind of regular just one of the verses and you would bring in another beat uh, maybe just the snare or maybe just the hi-hat and then drop out the bass on the original track and bring in the bass on the new track so it kind of comes together like that type of thing okay so like that's a lot of moving parts but the one thing i try to teach them is like finding that bass on the and so like how do you just find that bass drum so you the record back to that same spot every time so that's something that is like the starting point with that you broke up a little bit so i just want to make sure that people heard you said you know you have to find the bass mm. um, yeah the bass yeah. drum like the, the kick okay. yeah um like that spot on the record you know in the beginning of the song is a good place to start just so you can like and what does your sound like like so what how would somebody know it's like you know obviously like a thump or yeah like yeah like a thud uh like um and you would pull it back just so it's like boom 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 like you would keep pulling it back with your hand and letting it okay. go just so you you're controlling it and you can let it go and try and match the other one okay uh, at the same time so of course you're going to do some adjustments but the idea is like there's one playing and you're holding the bass drum on the other record and you let it go when that other one hits um Right. And then you and then you you tweak it. But like that's like the starting point for matching a beat. And that's kind of like something that comes up. And I forget what you said now, like 10 minutes ago to me explaining that that triggered that. But it was like the teaching someone from like stage one of uh, of, you know, music production. But music production. I, I kind of thought of it as a DJ situation. Yeah. Well, how, how did you get into music? I guess all in all, I mean, you're a creative person all around. I, I know there's a lot of elements of that. So were you creative at, a, at an early age or? Yeah, I, yes. And I think, you know, we had talked about like, what would be interesting to talk about like as a kid. And I was thinking about that. What was I into as a kid? And the only thing I can really remember being into besides normal kid stuff is like, you know, yeah, artwork, drawing houses. Um, and I always listened to records and headphones and like uh played a guitar that had like two strings on it like just i was just into that stuff because it yep. was probably because it was like tactile and interactive and stuff you know mm. um but that's what i was into as a kid like i'd go into the basement we had these two like toy air organs and like while everyone's upstairs like watching tv i'd be like trying to play songs and stuff so it was, that's cool I was, I was into music from a, a young age yeah were you are your parents musical or do you have brothers and sisters or 
I do. Yeah. My, my brother was a drum is a drummer. Okay. He was always in bands and I, I always wanted to be like my brother, my older brother, okay. you know, he was seven years older than me. So he was, it was like, even like watching, you know, someone he was as a young child, he looked really old and cool to me. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but yeah, he was in bands and he, he, um, he, I think him and my sister both into music and like more alternative music, mm. not so much just radio music. They were into like, you know, um, at that time, I guess it was like punk, punk rock. And, um, you know, my brother was real big into skate, skateboarding, skating, and like all into that whole thing vibe. So they, they exposed me to the music, which was like seven inch records and, you know, independent music labels putting stuff out and, you know, recorded cassette tapes and stuff like that. So they kind of exposed me to that. And I think I just grabbed a hold of it. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. And it's, it's, um, it's interesting even just talking about the indie or the alternative music right now, because I'm, I'm really, you know, realizing that I'm into that genre a lot. Um, and it's really the only it's the only genre that I'm finding new music or I'm seeking out new music. So I wanted to get your thoughts on, um, you know, a lot of people right now are just, you know, in quarantine, I find myself gravitating <laughs> to the two is just more the nostalgic songs, you know, on Spotify, it's like the summer rewinds or the best songs that of this year. Um, but the only, yeah, the only genre that I'm seeking out new music is indie. And I feel like that's the only place that I'm finding things that I, I like that are new or that people are sharing with me. So like, what are your thoughts on that? Like, yeah. It's kind of a mixed bag of questions, but it is the nostalgia associated with music. And then also, you know, the importance of, of listening to new, new stuff. Yeah. Well, I think, uh, yeah, I, I, I think as a creative person, especially like when I find new music that I love everything else, like, um, is enhanced. Like mm. I feel more creative. I feel sharper, like smarter, you know, like it really does make a difference for me. And if I haven't, if I've been listening to the same old thing, even though I'm still way into it and trying to learn different nuances into it, it's like, I have to tell myself to move on and find something new because um, I'm kind of like stifling myself a little bit. But I think that like you had said, we all go gravitate towards the songs that we love and, and know will work in a particular emotion we're feeling. You know what I mean? Like you match a song to like the state of mind or the activity or the behavior. Right. Um, I know I, I do that. Yeah. Um, but then when you find something new by surprise, it's like, it's like, um, it's like, yes, like yeah. you, you, feel, you feel great, you know? And even if, it doesn't turn into like something you go back to all the time. It was just like a couple months you were into it. I still think it's like valuable, you know? Yeah. What's, uh, what's somebody that you like recently or, or a new artist? Yeah. Uh, so, um, I'm a tool fan. Okay. And, um, I, I have a lot of different musical tastes. Um, I've always been a tool fan because they're like a, music makers band you know what i mean like they're like if you like tool you probably like to make music because they're really intricate and they do like off timing and they spend years creating a song and you know what i mean yeah and there's like there's like rationale and and meaning upon meaning in their songs you know what i mean so there's a lot there um so they had been quiet for like 10 years because they were wrapped up in a lawsuit um about artwork, believe it or not. Um, and hmm. um, they finally came out with a new album this year at the beginning of this year. Yeah, I, I saw somebody had, uh, had sent that to me, so. Yeah, um, and that, that was awesome. And I actually, so I got to see them too live, which I had never seen them live. And they also put on like a really, um, I wouldn't say, well, I guess it's theatrical, but it's not like costumes theatrical. It's like visually theatrical, you know, like screen tons of screens all working in unison they're kind of like immersed in it and it's just okay. kind of like a cool experience also yeah so i i was into that for a really long time i've i've sort of like put it aside you know but it was definitely a full i don't know a couple months of to the point of like 
people were like, you got to start listening to something new. Like, <laughs> get, off, get off the tool vibe for a while, you know? Yeah. It's, yeah, it seems like the, the people who are into tool are like super fans and it's very specific. It's not like a, it, yeah, it doesn't seem like a casual band that people are like, yeah, I like, and then just throwing tool in the mix. It's like, I like tool. You yeah. Know? Yeah. The consensus. Yeah. Um, because I'll, it's I'll you have to, a yeah. bit more because I, I have to I really it, listen to them. you have to invest like time to like learn it a little bit to to feel to 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 get the reward from it. Okay, there's other bands like that too, you know. But like who who else do you feel gives but, that same reward to to you? Sometimes you know, like from a from a the roots come to my mind, right? Other, because, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, like some of their earlier albums are like really heavy hip hop albums. And until you learn them, you Mm -hmm. know, you're kind of like, you, you know, you like the music and stuff, but you can't quite decipher what they're saying, you know, because you haven't learned the song. You haven't learned it yet. Right. But when you finally learn it, then it starts to have, like it all comes together, you know, take some time to learn it. Yeah. I was actually trying to model some of their beats (laughs) and and incorporate. That's good. Yeah. You know, into my theme song because i was like i just love like you know you got me i was like that would be an mm-hmm. amazing beat to kind of like version or sample oh uh, yeah um i like that too especially like, for an intro or yeah, whatever yeah it's an amazing like just very classic and i don't you know it's pretty simple it seems it's not too intricate but um it is wild just you know modifying some of these things and it's you know it could be it could be something uh yeah yeah, but yeah, I'm trying to think. So then, and then I like, I use Spotify mostly and it's, um, I always go the release radar or like new or like different, like, you know, new music. And I usually find one or two songs that are like I'm into. And then I collect them in a playlist of that, of that time, you know, and listen to the bunch of them together. Yeah. That's kind of how I listen yeah. to new music. When do you listen? Cause this is what I'm curious about listening to release radar i love it but i have to be in a certain place or doing something where it's like um you know i'm either cleaning up the kitchen or something where it's a little bit more mindless i I realize i can't listen to release radar as easily when i'm working or focusing on something because i i I either like quickly like dismiss it or i'm not paying attention to to what i'm really liking so we're where do you find best to listen to new music? That is true. It's like, it is like that type of, that type of thing too, for me, because if there's a specific like activity or behavior and I have like music, I know I like for that. I'll, it's sometimes I don't want to stray from that because I know it works, you know, but then like, for instance, if that activity goes longer and now you're like on to the next, songs that are suggested by you know that playlist or whatever um and like you know whatever you're cleaning the kitchen or you're working outside and um so then it is mindless and and maybe you hear one song out of 10 that's like ah i'm gonna go back to that what was that track like it is often like that and then also the car the car yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> which, which you know, I feel like I haven't been in. <laughs> I know. I've been filling yeah. my gas tank in probably months now. So um, yeah, you should probably yeah. go start start it up and drive it around the block <laughs> <laughs> a couple of times. Yeah, just to make sure. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's that's what I always find with the release radar, which I like a lot. I I love Spotify for that reason. I mean, you know, you've obviously seen that the whole path of of how things have gone like you know i was really into like napster and and all that oh yeah threes were coming out and it's just it's incredible to see like the the leaps and bounds from then where it was you know obviously illegal we're downloading it um and now you know we had that period where people were trying to do stuff and then just all of a sudden you know yeah yeah. figured it out yeah exactly it's like basically the music or people trying to harness the music industry were like, we basically just have to build our own, you know, quote Napster. You know what I mean? Right. Like we have to build our own uh, server and data and have, you know, like, and so I think that's like, interestingly a good like main idea for where we're at right now in the COVID world. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like anything you're trying to do at this point, 
it's a great time to just build your own or figure out how to build your own, whatever that thing is. You know what I mean? Right. That's like, um, um, and I'm just using that metaphorically, but it's like, now's the time to figure out that thing that, you know, you want to build. You know? want to build. Yeah. yeah. I, I guess your thoughts on, cause you bring up an interesting point there, you know, and it's one of the feelings that I have on why I'm more creative. You know, I, I, ve- I find it very hard to just commit to one thing and believe that that will last me through forever. You know, not with everything. I think relationships are one thing that should stay consistent and should deepen over time, but fleeting things like business models and, you know, ways to, to consume things obviously are constantly changing. So, you know, what are your thoughts on, on how, how, are, how do you keep up, um, you know, with everything and, do you think that has anything to do with your creativity or, or, you know, why you want, you know, to keep building new things or. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good, it's a, that's a tougher question, but it's, it, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's but, loaded, it, but yeah. No, no, it's, it's, it is interesting. Uh, like, you know, it is part of being creative because it's like problem solving, I think, you know, um, and it, I don't think anything does last like you just said. Right. But like, we had talked about this a little bit before and I think it's a good thing to bring up is like that process, right? Um, um, as a product designer, I uh, went to school for industrial design. You learn a process of like, um, who's the user, um, you research them and you kind of like put their, get into their shoes, which is basically what UX is, you know, with user experiences, human, human-centered design or user-centered design is really the idea that you're researching and then putting yourself in that person's shoes and then solving the problem for that specific thing. Um, so it's not like you're, you're, and you can apply that to really any sort of problem, you know, like what's the thing I need to research this thing and like figure out how to fix the problem. But, but not from the knowledge I know I have to, first understand this thing <laughs> right does that make sense so is yeah. it, that's that's your you would say that that's your creative process how you go about solving you know problems for you know your audience or the people that you're you're yeah. serving there. and even like when i work on my house you know like i do the same thing i think almost with everything and it and for me i'm like a physical learner i have to do it to learn it yeah. Can't just talk about it and or read it. I have to do it. So like I know that I know myself now and I know it's gonna get a little messy and I'm gonna make some mistakes and I might have to do it twice, but I'll learn it, you know, and that's usually how it goes for me. Like even in professional world, if I try something new, if I'm gonna give a presentation or try something new in that, um, I I'm aware that I may like fall on my face and that's, that's okay. And that's okay. <laughs> you know, yeah. that's okay. Yeah. Cause I, cause the, the value of the learning experience is just, is just infinitely uh, more valuable than um, being a, being like afraid of that feeling, you know, that right. feeling of like, I'm going to stumble. I'm going to be a little bit embarrassed, but sure you are, but you'll, you're, everyone, you'll be okay. Right. You know? Yeah. Well, how, how do you push past that? Because I felt this before, you know, even with, um, even with putting this podcast out there and putting myself out there more, it's, it is a creative expression of, of me and, you know, who I am, which, um, you know, is, is something difficult to do. So do you have to remind yourself to do that? Do you, do you have to, or, or are you just naturally okay with the, the potential failure of creativity um, cause that's, that's a, it's a scary thing for a lot of people. And, you know, I think it's, it's a, it's a, a regularly maintained, a, it's a regular thing. Yeah. It's like, it's not something you ever, or at least from a personal experience, I ever have gotten past, like I've get, I'm better at it. I'm better at taking the risk Yeah. and knowing there's a potential for it not to go the right way. And I think then with experience you you have your plan b and your plan c in your back pocket then you know what i mean yeah. as a as a more unexperienced as a as a person with less experience i would just have my 
you know, golden ticket and right. think it's going to work. And if it didn't, I don't know what to do after that. But, you know, now, thankfully, I've fallen enough times that I've got those other plans in place, usually, you know, hopefully. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I think I, I wonder if it's the same, um, you know, for yourself. You know, you, you talk about plan B and plan C. You know, I feel like I have a million of those. Like, God yeah. forbid something were to happen to this, I at least have this idea. So are you always coming up with or are you subconsciously thinking about new ideas or creative solutions to things? Do you think, yeah. like, I wonder if that just comes naturally as like a protective thing for creative people to always be on the lookout and never, almost never settle. Um, yeah. <laughs> as it, uneasy as that sounds, I feel like I'm always unsettled. So I, I want to see if you're the same. Yeah. I think there's things that I'm like, okay with letting go, you know, like, for instance, my own workspace, right? I have big plans for it mm -hmm. and I like chip away at it, but like I don't uh, give myself a hard time about it. But if it was doing it for someone else, you know, like I wouldn't settle till it was the right way. You know what right. I mean? But in terms of like always thinking about better ways or more improved ways or new things, I think that's, um, I don't know, it's kind of a gift, you know, as long as you know how to communicate it in a kind and, um, you know, caring way, meaning like you're not bashing things, you're just oh, yeah. like learning from them, you know, and I think that's a, that's a reminder for myself too. Like at times I could put a cynic hat on and be like, this thing sucks, man. I'm going to, I, I could do this better instead of like, you know, I'm glad they did this much work for me and I can take it from here and improve upon it, you know? Right. Yeah. 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 I think that's, that's important to know. And, and in that same, you know, uh, light, you know, not to be hard on yourself or cause there's sometimes I come up with an idea, I'm in love with it. And the next day I'm like, I hate it. I know. <laughs> but then it comes up, you know, two weeks later, I'm like, Oh, that's actually a pretty good idea. So it's, I don't do have those ups and downs too, where it's, you fall in love with something and idea wise, and then you're kind of out of it. I don't, I don't know if yeah. that, what other people I think do. that's okay. To, yeah. I think that's okay too. I was going to say that this could get into a little bit more of a, uh, what do I want to say? Not mystical, but like abstract side of it, you know, like for instance, where does, where do those ideas even come from? And like, do you, you know, is that, in, is that some sort of inspiration? Like, is that, is that you connecting to, you know, data or information that's out there and all around us, you know, and you get an idea and the important thing is you act on it, right? You have this idea, um, you have this inspiration, you should try it. You shouldn't, shouldn't waste those, you know, right. and you may love it, for a moment and then it's not the right thing. And I think that's, again, the experience part where you learn how to self edit, you know, like right. it's like, um, that, I, that was really cool and it could be, but it's not for now, you know, or it doesn't, you know, and just move it aside. I think that, I think that's a, also part of the daily, the daily grind, but I do love thinking about, you know, where the, where does, where do those inspirational moments come from? And then what do you do with it when it, when you have it? Right. I, yeah, I think that would be interesting to explore. Like if you wanted to do like another episode, we could kind of take that topic and yeah. maybe expand upon that a little bit more. Cause it's always something I'm like, where do these ideas come from? And <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know that, you know, not everybody that I've talked to has the same feeling. And I'm like, I can't stop these. Like they, they just, you know, are flooding my mind constantly and you know i'm always trying to weed them out so i you know if you're it's interested it. in the same like maybe it's something we could explore absolutely i mean i would say that you're you're you know you're connected to something you're a connected individual you know you're you're grounded and i think you're you're receiving that information because you're you're available and oh, and you want it you know right yeah yeah, that's what I think. You don't, you don't have any blockages of like, you know, and this is me speaking generally, not just about you, but person doesn't have any blockages of like um, that, you know, tough things going on in their life, you know, that are like blocking the, those, those, you know, places that the data flows to and from, you, you know, I uh, think that's like, 
that could get in the way of this free flow of great stuff. And I'd love to talk about that at some point. Yeah. Cause I'm, I'm curious, like if other, you know, have you, have you spoken with other creative folks about yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah. Um, what, what are their thoughts? Like, where do they think that their ideas come from? It's like, you know, Oh, do they come to you in the shower? This, you know, or is it yeah. just this constant beam of, you know? Yeah. It's, it's weird. So like, as it, probably a lot of designers do, a lot of creative people do are just really anyone goes on Pinterest and they like look up something and they go through, like for me, I go on there a couple of times a day because it's, you can get really specific. Like a lot of it's personal interest, but often like for, for QVC, we were uh, redesigning a sign, uh, like the entrance sign uh, to the entrance of the campus. And so, you know, you go on there and you search for like a monument sign or something, architectural sculpture, you mm-hmm. come up with stuff. And then really what happens is it's not the stuff that's on the screen that is um, you're taking. You start to visualize, you know, and you're almost like then you're in your own brain. And like, that's what I like to like remind myself of, like when it's happening, like I'm not, if I'm not finding anything I want, that's okay. But like those other images are gonna gonna help me formulate something you know right and i think other people have that same experience yeah it would be definitely something interesting we should uh we should touch on again and just make maybe like an episode or something around that we'll do a little you know yeah because that that could be there's a lot to talk about there i think yeah because i'm always interested where the ideas come from or why I'm getting these, <laughs> where are they, are they coming from a place of, you know, um, like yeah. security, like wanting to secure, you know, myself and, you know, but, or, or is it something much higher? I, I don't know, but, um, and not, you know, um, we could also, you know, I could start giving you uh, therapy too, uh, via the video yeah. <laughs> because that's, uh, you know, my, my mom is a therapist and, um, for whatever reason, like my team, um, and the teams I've worked with, like I always become, you know, at some sort of support system, uh, for them, um, because we start to have these types of conversation. It's not like I'm giving them any advice or knowledge or anything like that. It's more about like the willingness to explore ideas, you mm-hmm. know? Um, so I think like, what, so, so what I, what I was going to say is like, there may even be like a third party that could join that conversation that maybe has a different like viewpoint, you know, and yeah. it'd be interesting to compare it. Yeah. Well, let's, we'll, we'll kick that around. Um, cause it's something I've always been interested in. And you know, if you are too, I think, uh, it's something we should, we should try and put together. So, um, I know, I know you have to, to get rolling here. Um, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Today, I should, but... I should join the team meeting, but yeah, yeah. it's uh, I'm glad <laughs> no, we did this though. Yeah. I appreciate you coming on and um, yeah, stay tuned. We'll, uh, we'll, keep we'll the, circle keep back the conversation on conversation going. Okay. Creative therapy uh, potentially coming up here. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, cool, man. With you and we'll chat again uh, soon. All right, Mark. Thanks so much. Thanks, Phil. All right. Bye.